Okay, we're back at it, Pauline. So, we're going to have a look at something else, Pauline, but this might take a little bit longer. Um, if we look back to 2020, in July 2020, quite a few people organised a memorial event in memorial of their Anzac. And Matthew Reason of the Fixated Persons Unit considered this to be a terrorist act. Now, this was brought up before the Supreme Court of New South Wales, Pauline, and we go through some of the criminal code, as we've already been doing, and we get to section 101.6. Other acts done in preparation for or planning terrorist acts. And we were accused of preparing a terrorist act merely by preparing a memorial day and the raising of the flag of our ancestors, which we can go into as a war crime later because there are international treaties that forbid you as an administering power from stepping in to a party remembering their dead. A person commits an offence if the person does any act in preparation for or planning a terrorist act. Penalty, imprisonment for life. So basically, New South Wales police attempted to accuse Jua Kiskonen of a terrorist act leading towards wanting to imprison him for life. And in failing to get that far, then tried to use drugs within a jail system, creating another war crime along the way, Pauline. And this is documented on the Supreme Court of New South Wales court record. Now, a person commits an offence if the person does any act in preparation for or planning a terrorist act. Now, is infiltrating the Senate with the help of the Greens for the sheer purpose of undermining the Constitution a terrorist act? It is getting up on the media and shouting, this is war, a terrorist act? Is going into the Senate and mucking up your oath several times considered to be a terrorist act when you compound all of the other acts together. Pauline, this is very real, and these people don't realise the realm of law in which they're playing around like children. And carry on. Number two, a person commits an offence under subsection one if, even if, a terrorist act does not occur. So, just the mere standing up there and saying this is war, and putting the belief in other Aboriginals' minds that they could go to war against the Commonwealth because Lydia said so, even if it doesn't occur, she's guilty of this offence. 2B. The person's act is not done in preparation for or planning a specific terrorist act. The person's act is done in preparation for or planning more than one terrorist act. Now, we have no idea what these Aborigine have been doing inside our constitution as a minority citizenship with the help of this weft backed and, as Peter Dutton puts it, war power inside the Prime Minister's office. Okay, section 15.4, extended... Geographical jurisdiction, category D, applies to an offence against this subsection. So, a person commits an offence if the person does any act in preparation for or planning a terrorist act. Now, my, my question to you is, if Lydia is not guilty of treason, then is she guilty of a terrorist act by trying to attack the Commonwealth or incite others, black or white, to attack the Commonwealth. I mean, let's get real here, Pauline. They burnt the door of the Parliament down, which indicates that that's an act of terrorism right to start with from the word go. Okay, now, for going 
all of this we, we can now jump a little bit earlier in the constitution act because this is now relevant because this is how you treated us you accused us of being a terrorist organization you accused us of preparing a terrorist act merely for remembering the anzac that that is a stark revelation for this government to have had recorded on the supreme court of new south wales court record now I refer to anything that Lydia has done, but we also look at Albo from inside the Prime Minister's office acting rogue from the rest of the Parliament. Section 11.1, Pauline, attempt. 1. A person who attempts to commit an offence is guilty of the offence of attempting to commit that offence and is punishable as if the offence attempted had been committed. So it doesn't matter if the offence was followed through with, Pauline. Just the sheer notion that this is war is enough. That, that is an attempt to undermine and put the people at war through the voice of a person who is actually a senator working inside and under the Constitution. That's pretty sad, but it's true. And this is the reality of it. Two, for the person to be guilty, the person's conduct must be more than merely preparatory to the commission of the offence. The question whether conduct is more than merely preparatory to the commission of the offence is one of fact. Well, we had that fist bumping in the Parliament, right? We had a lot of mo mockery against the Crown and the King. We had a lot of mockery against the Constitution and white privilege and racism that doesn't exist because it is ceded by a, a greeny sort of communist power in the government on behalf of WEF partners trying to undermine country financially. Three, for the offence of attempting to commit an offence, intention and knowledge are fault elements in relation to each physical element of the offence attempted. Now, we know that Adam Bant is directly responsible or partly responsible for manipulating the Senate so that Lydia could initially get a seat in the Senate. And we also know that since getting that seat in the Senate, the Senate has turned into nothing more than the clown show. We've seen the fist bumping of the oath. We've seen the declarations of war. We've seen all the Twitter posts in relation to not being an Australian citizen and not being part of the Commonwealth and being a sovereign mob while taking up citizenship and owning corporations in the Commonwealth under ASIC. This is a contradiction of speech and is de de it is defining a delusion at law. A person may be found guilty even if committing the offence attempted is impossible. B. The person actually committed the offence attempted. So even if, this, even if going to war is an impossibility, King v. Casement 1917, while Australia as a administering power is in a battlefield in Ukraine, the similar sort of situation here applies, doesn't it, Pauline? in that you're stepping outside of the line that is at war without being a naked owner. And that puts you in a quandary, doesn't it, Pauline? Because now aren't you an enemy of the state? See, I, I take no position here. I am neutral to your war. You go and create war for all the hell you like, but uh, you'll not create war crimes while you do it. That, that's my position here, a position of neutrality. But w would that not constitute non-neutrality? Enemy of the state position, that would be... Five, a person who is found guilty of attempting to commit an offence cannot be subsequently charged with the completed offence. Six, any defences, procedures, limitations or qualifying provisions that apply to an offence apply also to the offence of attempting to commit that offence. So it's a double quandary. Now, now you've charged double because you've been charged with the offence and charged with the attempt. An attempt says that the offence is the offence regardless of whether you carried it out or not. And even if the offence was impossible, it's still an offence. Now you've got a double quandary up your sleeve. Uh, and this is where we look at Lydia has already laid out a 
basic element of uh, the offence multiple times. Uh, and this is where we get to this reality, Pauline, in that I think you as senators are children in that you don't actually know the law that you're supposed to uphold. And I don't think you know how to keep anybody in that parliament to account. That, that's a real problem. Number seven, it is not an offence to attempt to commit an offence against subsection 11.2, complicity and common purpose. Subsection 11.5, conspiracy to commit an offence. Or section 135.5, conspiracy to defraud. So if we actually go to the crime, uh, Criminal Code 1995, Pauline, and just scrolling down here because we started again, and we go to Division 11. Okay, we're there. So we, we read through attempt, and now we have complicity and common purpose. A person who aids, abets, counsels, or procures the commission of an offence by another person is taken to have committed that offence and is punishable accordingly. So what is Gama and what Elbow is doing behind closed doors with Aboriginal citizens, treating them like they're not Aboriginal citizens, giving them rights over and above all other citizens in the Commonwealth of Australia as Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of Australia? Is he complicit to something? Would he have attempted something? Would Lydia have attempted something? Would Dutton have pointed out something? The person, for the person to be guilty, the person's conduct must have in fact aided, abetted, counselled or procured the commission of the offence by the other person. So, who pushed Lydia into the Parliament? Who gave Lydia a seat in the Senate? Who gave Lydia a, a script to go and run? Who pushed Lydia into all this ideology? These are questions that need to be asked of someone that's committed a swath of criminal offences before not only Australians, but the entire world. Joint Commission. A person and at least one other party enter into agreement to commit an offence. And here we have an Uluru statement from the heart that's been lied about as a poster when it's a 26-page legal document and Albo wants to change your constitution, a legal document, and Albo hasn't given you the words of a legal document that he wishes to change. So he's in the commission of an offence with other parties. And this is the unfortunate truth for everyone. I'm only reading through this criminal code, right? Now, we, we go through commission by proxy. We go through incitement, okay? We go through conspiracy, and that's the big one, which we will get into later, Pauline. So I will refer that I will return back to 11.3, 11, 11.4, 11, 11.5, right? So we're now looking at even attempting to commit a crime is a crime, Pauline. And, and treating crimes as acts of politics because you believe you have parliamentary privilege does not constitute trying to dissuade your own oath before the entire world. It does not excuse you from standing on a podium before a population of Victoria and yelling, this is war, and having it recorded on the media and displayed around the entire international world. These words are very serious, and these actions are very serious, Pauline, and I think the Australian Federal Police need to be called immediately. Governor-General, again, I think you need to step into the Parliament, and I th think you need to discuss the fact that they are party to criminal offences, and you are party to them yourself.